Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Can You Solve This? My name is Shatanik and today I have some controversial stuff for you. Stuff that can actually offend some hardcore chess players out there. But let's see. So today I have brought with me a helpmate. So what is a helpmate? A helpmate is a kind of problem where uh, the both sides, white and black, they give up their rivalry. They are not anti antagonistic to each other anymore and they work together, cooperate with each other to actually uh, towards a common goal. And in most cases, that common goal is to checkmate the black king. Uh, yeah, so the idea of a helmet is uh, extremely counterintuitive, especially for a chess player, because in this kind of problem, there is no rivalry, there is no contest between the two sides. They are just working together, making free moves. You can play any move from the white side, any move from the black side, and as long as they're legal, you can play them. So let's see. Our problem today is by one of the famous composers of all time and a famous chess personality of all time, Paul Benko. So let's uh, put the position on the board. Okay, so let's put the black pieces first. There are black pawns on h2, h3, d, d3 and d4. The black king is on a8 and there is a knight on f2. So those are the black pieces. Now let's put up the white pieces on board. There is a white pawn on d2, white pawn on a2 and the white king is on e1. So there is a position and, and the task here is to help mate in 7 and black will start first. So black will play the first move and from there he will simply assist white to achieve the common goal and, the, and that goal is to checkmate the black king which is right now on a8. So how do you do that? This is an easy problem but we will go to the next part of the problem that will be a little more tricky. So pause your video right here and try to solve this. Black to play black starts and it's a helpmate in 7. You have to find a sequence, a unique sequence of 7 moves. Okay, I hope you gave it a good try and you should be able to solve this one because it's not, not that difficult. The idea when you are asked to checkmate a, checkmate a king, the idea is to always simply, the most direct, straightforward idea is to take the king to the corner of the board. And you can do this easily in this case. You can bring this uh, AI 8 king right here to h1 and then let's say you promote this pawn to a queen or a rook and then you bring the rook or the queen to a1 and this, this will be a checkmate. So the final final mating picture that we are gunning for would be something like this. You will have the white king on f2, a rook on a1 and the king on h8. That's it. And it will be a checkmate. And it's not uh, difficult to execute this. It's very easy. You start by playing king to b7, white plays a2 to a4, king c6, a5, king d5, a6, king e4, a7, king uh, f3. Now you don't take a, don't promote to a queen because that would be a check. So you take a rook instead, promote to a rook. Now king to g2, bring the rook to a1, king to h1, and now king into f2. This is a checkmate. And that's the end of the solution. But this is just the beginning. And the story is still not over yet. Over yet. So let's go back. I mean, we are talking about Paul Benko here, and he's a tricky guy. He will not just leave you with such a simple problem. Okay, so now he asks, he gives you a second part to this problem. He says that I'm going to add a bishop on h4. So this is a twin, a second part to the, uh, to the problem. So he adds a bishop on h4, and now he says, now he challenges us to find a helpmate in seven. Once again, it's black to play, and you have to find a helpmate in seven this time. Once again, and why this is more complicated? Because now you cannot now the usual plan to bring the king to the corner. Let's say h1 doesn't work because this f2 knight is guarded by the bishop on h4. So, so you have to think of something else. So you have, the final mating picture will be different. One hint that I can give you is this: that since in the first solution. We used this, uh, we, we promoted this pawn on a2 and this pawn was the, you know, white unit that act actually delivered the mate. 
in the second solution, the second part, it would not it would not be this pawn, but this pawn on d2. And you know, so basically in helpmates, the uh, solutions are often uh, complementary like like this. So pause your video right here and think how can you checkmate the black king using this pawn on d2. So you have to promote it somewhere and then uh, checkmate the black king on a8. Okay, I hope you gave it a good try. Okay, so when I was thinking about this problem, a lot of uh, possibilities came to my mind, but they were complicated. For example, uh, one possibility was to bring the king to, let's say, e4, uh, the bishop to e5, capture this knight, get the king to uh, g4, and then promote this pawn to a queen or a bishop. And this would be a checkmate, a nice checkmate. You can see all the squares are guarded. But this is too complicated because you see, uh, to bring the king to g4 from e1, you take three moves. And the pawn on a2, in order to promote to a8, it requires minimum five moves. So you cannot achieve this plan uh, in just seven moves. You have only seven moves to make. So even though this was an attractive plan, but you could, uh, you could not realize this plan. You could not bring it to fruition. So let's go back. Okay. So, yeah, I, I started thinking, uh, I started off by thinking all these uh, complicated possibilities, but as often is the case, uh, the solution is always, you know, something simple, something elegant. So there is a principle in problem solving and logic called Oakham's razor, which roughly states that the simplest uh, possibility is the best. The simplest solution is the best. So try to uh, think of something simple, something that is not so complicated, you know. Okay, so I hope you gave it a good think. Now, the final mating picture, let me just tell you what kind of mating picture we're gunning for here is this. We want to rook on a7, and then we want to promote this pawn to c8. And we want, to, we want a queen on c8, and this would be a checkmate. And this is a very simple checkmate. I mean, there is nothing complicated about this. Uh, everyone is familiar with, uh, with, uh, with this mating pattern. But how to achieve this? Well, the sequence, uh, the sequence is very subtle and it requires some precision. So first of all, we have to clearly we have to sacrifice this knight on c3 because you want the C, d pawn to promote on c8. You can do that by either by d1 to c3 or e4 to c3. But which one? Also, uh, you need a rook on a7, and that rook can come from by promoting this pawn. You know h2 to h1 but when you promote to uh, h1 promote to a rook on h1 you will have a check on the first rank and you will need to uh, guard guard your white king from that check how do you do that well keeping all that in mind the solution is this first uh, knight v4 check now the king moves to d1 then knight c3 check knight is captured and now black plays bishop to e1 the idea is to simply guard this uh, first rank so that black can promote to a rook without a check. And this is why you have to play knight e4, knight c3 and not knight d1 and knight c3 because you need your king on d1 and then you need to bring your bishop on e1. Okay, so white goes ahead with the plan, simply pushes the pawn and now black promotes to a rook. Black pushes. Now this black rook will take the shortest path to a7. And what is that? Well rook h2, rook a2, rook a7. White pushes, black captures, white pushes. Now black plays rook to a7 and now this is the end. White moves to a queen on c8 and this is the end of the helmet. The side problem is solved. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, helmet and you were actually not offended by this because I have seen many chess players scowl at the very idea of helmets. But they are actually very elegant and very imaginative. Uh, I can tell you that help play is one of the most imaginative forms of chess. And if you get a taste for them, uh, you will be completely hooked. Uh, and, the, and the composer today was also someone very special. Uh, Paul Benko was a person with expansive you know, chess understanding. He was not only a chess player, but also a composer, a problemist, a solver, and also a trainer. And uh, you know, sometimes his problems were so difficult, especially his studies, that even people like John Nunn, 
uh, who, are, who, are, who are, you know, legends in, in the world of problem solving, found them too difficult to solve. And he also composed a lot of helpmates and perhaps an odd combination, but yeah, uh, that's how he was. And as a chess player, Pal Benko is a legendary figure. His exploits there as well are quite unmatched. For example, uh, you know, uh, before Bobby Fischer defeated Boris Paskey, uh, Pal Benko actually qualified for the World Championship cycle. But he later left his uh, spot and gave that spot to Fischer so that Fischer could uh, rise to the top. And later Bobby Fischer went on to become the world champion by defeating Spassky in 1972. So, yeah, so Pal Benko, a very interesting chess personality. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back with a new video uh, very soon. Till then, goodbye and happy solving.